What's up everybody? Today we're making a Japanese Nada knife out of 640 layers of Damascus steel. Now at the end of this process, this knife is going to be sent out to auction and all the proceeds are going to go to help veterans in need. Now from this Damascus, I'm going to take 1095 high carbon steel and 15 and 20 high carbon steel. I'm going to cut them into three inch pieces. I'm going to clean them up, grind them, stack them, alternating layers, weld them up. I'm going to throw on a MIG weld to make sure they don't go anywhere in the forge welding process. This billet is about 10 pounds. It's going to be a little crazy, barely fit in the forge. So I'm going to throw this billet under the press. I want to forge weld all these pieces together. We're not melting the steel. We're not creating a homogeneous mixture. This billet's pretty tight, but I'm just gonna go ahead and put some borax on here to act as a flux. Keep this thing from oxidizing and ruining the welds. So on the hydraulic press here at first build, we're looking at pressures up to 100, 120 tons per square inch on this billet. Now after I'm sure that these welds are set on the press, I'm gonna move over to the power hammer and that's gonna speed things up drastically. Right now, I just wanna stretch this billet out, get it thin, get it even, so I can cut it up into sections, restack, re-weld, build those layers up. So I've got my billet, 32 layers. It's all stretched out and I'm gonna cut it into five, five inch sections. Restack them, clean them up, re-weld them. And that'll take me to 160 layers of steel. If you walk away from the forge for too long, you can melt your steel. I just melted off the front section of this billet. Under closer inspection, it looks like it melted just right under one of the jets in the forge. So the melt point is really small. And if I just grind back some of that ruined steel, we're still clean, we're still good, and we can stack this thing back up. So this billet is starting to give me a lot of trouble. I overpressed it, went too long on the throws of the press. The billet started to split on the sides. And I'm a little worried that those are not gonna weld back up. But the best thing I can do is try to clean them out, flux them back up, and just work them on the power hammer. If these splits in the billet, they just cold shut without fusing, then this can ruin my entire piece and ruin a whole day's worth of work. David and Mona Waldeck from the Combat Vets Association decided to stop by, give a little bit of feedback, and we're all really excited to see this thing go to auction and help out the veterans who need it. I got the billet up to 640 layers. I cut it down to size for the knife, and now I'm gonna hand hammer out to finish. So now the knife is shaped out by hand. I'm gonna go ahead and clean it up on the grinder. I'm gonna go ahead and drill my pinholes, and I'm gonna get this thing ready for the quench. So now I'm going to bring this knife up to temperature evenly throughout and I'm going to go in for the quench. What's up everybody? We're about to go to Quench Town, USA. Population this knife. So we just come out of the quench. Everything's nice and straight. I'm loving it and we're getting closer and closer to seeing that beautiful pattern. So this kit here will give me an approximation of the Rockwell. Each of these files is set to a certain Rockwell hardness, and I'm just gonna see which files skate across the material and which ones bite. And when it starts to bite, that means I'm at or below that Rockwell. Probably right at 60, between 55 and 60. Rockwell. So after the quench, I'm going to throw it in the oven at 450 degrees for about two hours and let this temper back down. Now that all the hammering and heat is done, it's time to do one of my least favorite parts, grinding. Grind and grind and grind. Get the surfaces smooth, get them polished up, get it ready for that etch reveal. So I filled up a little tub with some ferric chloride acid and I'm going to put this knife in and we're going to see that 640 layer pattern pop out. Going along with the military theme of this knife, I'm gonna use some green canvas micarta for the handle. It's gonna be nice and strong, very durable, and create a sort of military aesthetic. I wanna make sure everything's glued up, everything's tight, there's no gaps, and that it's gonna take a lifetime of abuse and service.
There it is, all 640 layers of this Japanese nata. We got an exposed lanyard hole, some exposed Damascus, the singular bevel, file work in the tang, green canvas micarta handle. Um, this thing turned out pretty sweet. It's got some modern touches to a very old design. Feels really good. It's got some heft to it. I'm really thankful for David and Mona Waldeck for coming out. I hope this thing earns a ton of money at the Spring Fling for veterans in need. Awesome thing that's happening. Thanks for watching.